precise intended purpose structure or material. The journey to Usuma Dam, which is located at Ushafa in Buari along Duse Buari Road, Abuja, is a 20 minutes drive from our location, Katampe Extension, as we encountered no traffic. The area was dominated by the Bagi people before the creation of the dam. Thus, the name Usuma. The dam is 1.3 kilometers from the main gate. It was created in 1987. It's an earth filled dam located at the highest point, northwest of the Federal Capital Territory, and is sited on a virgin location where human activity is minimal, thereby ensuring non pollution of the environment and free from industrial impurity. Loa Usuma Dam is the fifth largest in the world with a length of 1,300 meters, width of 10 meters and a saddle dam of 350 meters long, built to retain water for treatment purposes for the residents of the FCT. The dam has an upstream filled with rip wraps and downstreams filled with grass to protect the structure from erosion. The dam has a storage capacity of 100 million cubic meters of water and a depth of 49 meters. It is surrounded by towering hills and a restricted area due to its sensitivity. After its construction, it was allowed to impound for three years before it got to the maximum level for the water to get to the treatment plant. To achieve a steady supply of water, especially during the dry season, it was thought that the source of water was not going to be enough to meet the needs of the residents of the city of Abuja, so the government thought of a plan to be able to generate a steady water supply. Hence, the Usuma Dam was linked through the concept of interbasing water transfer with a pipe of 3 meter diameter to the Gurara River in Kaduna State, which is eight times bigger with an estimate of 850 cubic meter to augment it, especially during the peak of the dry season when the water is drastically reduced. The Gurara Dam is at the highest point in the Usuma Dam and flows by gravity from a distance of 75 kilometers to Usuma Dam, 5,000 cubic meter per hour. The phase two is a mirror image of the first plant and came into operation in May 2000, 13 years later, with a nominal production capacity of 5,000 cubic meter per hour, which sums up to 10,000 cubic meter. Phases three and four are designed to produce 10,000 cubic meter per hour, which is a total of 20 cubic meter per hour. Altogether, the four plants produce 30,000 cubic meter per hour water production. You are welcome to Lower Usuma Dam water treatment plant. This is our mimic board, which shows a, is a pictorial uh, stages of uh, the water treatment uh, process. You have phases one and phase two. You can see we're coming from the dam. The dam is higher than this point. This is lower. The water comes by gravity to the treatment plant for the various uh, treatment uh, process. If you can look at the other end there, you see that green uh, inlet. That's the raw water inlet from the Suma Dam where we're coming from. It's a pipe that has a diameter of about 1.5 meter. You know, since the dam is higher than this point where we are, it comes by gravity. So that high pressure it comes with, when it gets to this structure here, it uplifts the water to undergo this uh, stumbling, which we call cascading in engineering. This is the first stage of the treatment process. This is the aeration process. So the aeration is aimed at improving the quality of the raw water before the preliminary treatment. Here, the water is exposed to the atmospheric uh, air Oxygen is increased, obnoxious gases uh, escape into the air. Then odor, smell, and manganese and iron is oxidized at this stage. From this aeration stage, which is stage one, 
it goes into the preliminary stage, that's stage two. At this point is where we inject the water treatment chemical for the treatment process. Alum, which is popularly called as aluminum sulfate and hydrated lime, that is calcium hydroxide, and then pre-chlorination is done at this point before the water moves into this uh, big two tanks we are seeing, which we call the Poseto clarifier. The reaction of these chemicals take place at this place. Flocculation and coagulation takes place here. The clear water is collected on top of this channel. From here, it moves into the sand filter bed. The sand filter bed, they are eight in number, made with fine sand grains that allow the filtration of only clean water. Particles, no matter how small they are, the sand traps it. So pure water, clean water passes through these nozzles into this chamber. From here, comes into this uh, pipe collection uh, line. You can see it collects for this, this collects for this. All these are filtered water. From here now, before it goes into the clear water tank, we do the last post treatment. Here at this point, we inject uh, chlorine, that's disinfection, and here also we add, we do post uh, liming. So here the post liming is to allow for equilibrium uh, pH to ensure that we have an adequate pH that is acceptable for drinking water. Here also, before it goes, we do the disinfection because you did pre-chlorination at that point. Microorganisms, there are many uh, organisms that you cannot see. If they survive this process, by the time it gets to here, it's finally taken care of. From here now, the water moves into this uh, two big tank, big tank, which we call the water treated uh, tank. From here now, the outflow goes to all the service storage tanks we have in the city. We have a tank, uh, tank uh, two in Katampe, where you guys are. Then we have tank three in, Asok in Metama. You have tank four in uh, Asokoro. Then we have uh, tank five in uh, Apo. Then we have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, tank two we already is in Katampe. So there are other tanks that are ongoing. That's the tank one and tank six. The project is on for the districts they are going to serve. So rightly, as I've said at the time, is that the engineers and the planner, the concept of this place is to minimize cost. So that's you, 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 you less pumping. You take your water from here to the city without pumping. It's just you don't no stress, no nothing. So you are not paying for anything except what you pay. You pay for utility, utility gas. Uh, electricity. So that's running the, 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 the machines that will do all the process for you. But in terms of taking the water out, we are not doing any pumping, so we save a lot of costs. So from here, this water gets to all these tanks. Then from the tanks, the residents of the cities are supplied. So you can see we have our internal pumping station. You have the pressure, the pressure water pumps. This is for the office uh, uh, use for batching tanks, for batching chemicals like aluminum sulfate, making the solution for the treatment process. You have the wash water pump. This is for backwashing of the sand filter bed. You have the lime saturator pump. That's the lime saturator there. The lime comes in slurry form, just like in milky form. So what we do is that to get the lime water we use for disinfection, you need this lime water to mix with the slurry lime to produce the lime water for you for post liming. Then you come for disinfection. The chlorine we use at that side, you can look at chlorination at that point. So the chlorine comes in contact at the injection point with water, mixed together to produce the uh, chlorinated water for you for pre-chlorination and post-chlorination. You have the backwash water tank. The backwash water tank is installed with two submersible pumps, standby and duty. So all the wastewater during the backwash process come into this tank. Then this pump lift this water again back to the aeration process. Not, not, you don't waste it, you recycle the water again. So, and lime saturator I've shown you, those are all chemical tanks, the aluminum sulfate, the lime, the potassium permanganate, the polyelectrite. You have the skull air blower that is backwashing, it agitates the sand bed during uh, uh, during the backwashing process. You have the compressed air system. All the valves we have at the treatment plant here, they are pneumatic valves. They use uh, air for opening and closing. That is where you have the air compressor. 
the air is compressed into the tank and then it is allowed to go into all the pipe networks of all the installations that has to do with, that has, in, that has installed pneumatic valves to open and close during an operation uh, exercise. So you have our power station there, we have standby generator in case there is a, a power outage because we wouldn't like to disrupt the production which is meant to go for 24 hours. So that's our pump station. So these are all meters that we have here, records all the hourly inputs of all our equipments on installation. So one of the, the, the M&E has rightly said their schedule is they monitor all this equipment, knows the hourly input of every machine. If it is due for servicing or, I mean, to allow it to uh, greasing and oiling and what have you, they check the, new, they check the hourly input of all these machines. Okay, this machine is due to rest. The standby will, 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 I mean, the standby will, will pick on why the DT rest. So that's how they do the routine uh, exercise of uh, all this machine. May, I mean, monitoring the hourly input of all the, 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 the put into operation. So virtually, well, this is just, as I have said, this is a, a pictorial display of all the treatment uh, stages and the processes that will go on the, the water undergoes before it is finally given out to our consumers. So if you go to the site now, it's, you see the physical structure of all that has been displayed here. So this is just for you to have an idea of what we do in here and stuff. So that's all we do here for uh, ensure we get uh, good drinking water to the city of Africa. Filtered water is then passed through the collection chamber to the treated water tank. At the collection chamber, the water is safe to consume. In the distribution of water to the residents of the Federal Capital Territory... It is growing every day. The first conception was to have reticulation in phases. And with the growth of the city, it makes it difficult to reach everybody. Like you might say, okay, there are some, even some places within the city that do not have water. Yes, the reason is because the first phases that we are put in place did not get down to there. So many estates are springing up day by day, and this reticulation is not at, you know, extended to that. But there's hope because after taking into consideration the growth of the city and the need for water for everybody. There is a project that is coming up, Greater Abuja Water Project, which uh, my Honorable Minister, Mala Mamebelo, is very much in it. So very soon, the city will have more reticulations and water distribution will be better. Like for instance, this year, we started asking for water very early. Why? Because the dam water has gone very low and is affecting us getting water into the treatment plants. So we had to ask early. Other years, we start asking for water around the month of March. But you can't believe that we start asking for water from Gurara in the month of January. That's to tell you that much people are taking this water and we are treating more of this water to get it across to the people. Then uh, we have the rehabilitation going on at the dam. I know when you visit the dam, you'll be able to see it. That contract was awarded 2011, but because of the paucity of funds, about 87% of the contract was uh, executed. But the main one, which is about 17%, was left out. And so many things have come up. The Federal Executive Council by 2017 upgraded or kind of appraised the contract. And luckily, last year, 2021, my Honorable Minister gave consent and 
the contract has started again. And that 17% is to take off the slab of it, the tank. The slab has been there for the past 35 years. And it was constructed. That was the first because it has to do with plant one and two. So the tank is a, quite a big tank that takes over 80,000 cubic meters of water. Okay. So we discovered that the chlorine fumes have started working or dealing with the, with the concrete, the reinforcement there. So the best was to take it off and start all over again, which is the contract that was started there. I mean, the job was started last year and the rehabilitation is going on. Hopefully, before the end of February, uh, before the end of April, the contractor has assured us that it's going to be finished. And for us to have it done, we have to do a bypass so that water treated can just move straight into the distribution network instead of, you know, stopping the that process. So we did something in such a way that the residents of Abuja will not suffer for lack of water. For instance, the, the bypass we have takes water to Guagualada Airport, some places in, within uh, Life Camp area and the rest of them. So we've not had any issue. Reports have it that the Federal Capital Territory Water Board has been faced with cases of illegal connections by its residents. We have cases. That is why I told you that the project we are into for monitoring our distribution network is very, very important. We have had cases. You can see as a city is growing, everybody needs water. Apart from using our staff, I must tell you that to do that illegal connection, they go out to use private plumbers to go even into our mains, which is very, very dangerous. Our mains. You get the point? You see a lot of connections here and there. And these men are not supposed to be touched. They're not supposed to, because it has its routine. It has its direction. And once it has been tampered, the, the areas where you have beautiful distribution network will be distorted. Where you hear people say, oh, I used to have uh, good pressure of water. Now I don't have good pressure. The pressure is low. These are some of the problems. Some people will say, okay, I do have, I used to have water. Now I do not, I don't have water again. These are some of the problems. Because of that tapping, you understand? You are now misdirecting the distribution of water. So it's enormous, it's a lot. But with what is happening, what is going to happen, we'll have more distribution. At least house, most homes or properties will have water. So the issue of illegal connections will be, will be de-emphasized. Of course, the emphasis will not be coming up. And once we have this project, the smart, smart uh, monitoring, it will reduce that greatly. During dry season, but then we have uh, without the departments, there will be no water supply in all the places. We have distribution department. Their job is to make sure that there's proper distribution network. Like when I say recirculation, they are in charge of that. You have reservoir production. They are the dam there. They are the ones that did all the production of this water. You have quality control. Their job is to make sure that the raw water is well treated, very well treated. So when we say we have portable quality water, we are talking about Department of Quality Control. Then we have Department of Commerce because this is a revenue generating outfit. So after we have given the water, we need to get uh, some of the, I mean, 
the efforts made, which is not even commensurate with the amount of money spent in treating the water. For instance, uh, one cubic meter of water is sold for 80 naira. And what, what do I mean by one cubic meter of water? It's equivalent to five drums of water for 80 naira. So you can understand when I say it's not commercial. You can't compare it with the effort put in place to get this water to the people, quality water to the people. Then you have admin, administration, you know admi administration all over the world, everywhere, is to make sure that uh, the human effort is being put in place, that manage the human activities, to make sure that all these persons are distributed in the various places they should be. And you have finance also, take care of the salaries and the rest of them and every other thing. Revenue generation too, they are into that. So you find out that all these things are in place to bring up the functioning of the board itself. And by that, with the kind of services they render, water is life. If there is no water, nobody can stay in this city. Nobody, nothing can live there. So they are contributing heavily to make sure that the federal capital city is sustained and is growing daily. The quality control laboratory says our water goes through different stages of treatment before leaving the plant. It comes from the dam, that's the raw water. It goes through aeration, exposing it to air. It goes through coagulation, where we use alum to achieve clarity of the water. Then it goes through disinfection, where we use chlorine to kill microorganisms, disease-causing organisms, and then it goes out. So every analysis we do in the lab is to maintain and to make sure that all these stages of water treatment is going on properly. That's basically what we do here. So we have different, I'll just tell you briefly the analysis we do on a daily basis. There are some we do on a daily basis. There are some we do two, three times a day. There are some we do twice in a week and there are some we do once in a week. So the first one we do is physiochemical analysis. Mm, by the name is physical chemical analysis. We check the physical properties of the water and the chemical properties of the water joined together. In the physical properties of the water that we check, we check the temperature, we check the turbidity, we check the pH, we check the color, we check the total dissolved solids in the water. And then for the chemical aspect, we check the alkalinity of the water, we check hardness, and we check the chloride ion content because we use chlorine as our disinfectant. And then we do what we call bacteriological analysis. That's a very important analysis that we do here. It helps us to check whether our disinfection process is effective. That is, we check whether the water is contaminated or not before it leaves the plant. So when we run that analysis, it will help us to know if there is still contamination in the water or our disinfection process has been effective. And we also do what we call JAR tests or flocculation tests. This test helps us to know the amount of coagulants, and our coagulants here is alum, that we use to achieve clarity of the water. We also do biological analysis. We also do organic matter analysis. We do that once a week. It helps us to just keep track of our effectiveness of our water treatment. I think that is basically most of the analysis that we do in the lab. Then to the equipment that we, that we, that we use in the lab. This is a spectral photometer. We use it to check, okay. We use it to check our color and we use it to check we can check several ion contents in the water. We can use this to do, it has a wide range of functions, but I'm just going to tell you briefly some of the functions we do. We use it to check um, the color of our water. And we check, there are some ions in the water that we monitor, like iron, like manganese, like sulfate, like phosphate. We can also use this machine to check that also. And then that is a flocculator. That is what we use for the flocculation analysis. It's like a mini clarifier. This mimics what happens in the treatment plant. This mimics what happens in our clarifiers. So this is like a mini clarifier. We use this to ascertain the number of bags of coagulants we need to do to achieve clarity of the water. 
and then that is a buret, it's a simple buret setup for titration. And it's titration that we use to determine our mm. alkalinity, our hardness, and our chloride ion content. Our samples that we use for biological analysis, we usually keep them for 24 hours to check, to allow the bacteria to grow, if there's really, because what we use is lactose broth. We use that as food for the bacteria. So we inoculate our water samples into the lactose broth media. So if there is bacterial growth, the bacteria will act on that lactose broth sugar, and then there will be a production of CO2. So when you come after 24 hours, you will see that. But if there is no bacterial growth, you will see that your sample is clear. So this is an incubator where we use to keep our samples incubated there for sometimes 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours. And then this is our fridge. We use this for the storage of our lactose broth media used in biological analysis. It has to be stored between temperatures of one and four degrees. One and four degrees for like two weeks. You can store it if it's been there. So this fridge is set to that particular temperature for the storage of our media so that it doesn't get spot and it can last for a long time depending on how long we want to use the media. They are both microscopes, the two of them, and they are both functional. We use them in biological analysis. We use them to check for the microorganisms that can be found in the water, both zooplanktons and phytoplanktons. That is plant-based and animal plants, microorganisms that can be found in the water. This is like use, it will help us to see it clearly. So that's the essence of this. When the water is being distributed to the residents of the Federal Capital Territory for consumption, residents then pay a tariff of 80 Naira per cubic meter to the water board. This tariff helps generate revenue for the body. Even though, like my colleagues will say, oh, our money, uh, water is very cheap, I agree. 80 Naira per cubic meter is cheap. So when you consider how much you buy bottled water, that five cell of, of uh, bottled water, or when you think of the one we call pure water, how much is a sachet? And when you compare what to 80 Naira per cubic meter, cubic meter is five drums of water. It's quite cheap. Although we are, I've done a memo for review of tariff, because the present uh, price we have now, or cost we have now, was about, about 10, 15 years ago. So we need a review, so that people can even appreciate what has been given to them. Okay, earlier, we deal with commercial banks. We had about 10 of them, but with the government regulation and directive, we pay through remitter. And the payment method is customers to derive their RRI, get it done, then do their payment. I will have gone even far to establish a way how customers can pay without any problem. We have what we call POC, proof of concept. The proof of concept we have designed, customer would not need to go to commercial banks to derive RRI. You can make payment of water, even as you are st sitting down with me here, and in the comfort of your bedrooms, in the comfort of your sitting rooms, anywhere. You can just get to our page and make up, pay up your bill. You know, then we have another method. We have a night bus, which has been stretched in all our area offices, even at the headquarters here. You come with your cash, pay in the money. So it's as simple as anything. And in addition to that, we have deployed uh, system spec. They are the ones actually in charge of perimeter, system spec staff to our various area offices. Uh, we have 16 area offices distributed within the city and environs. We have Kobo 1, Kobo 2. We have Gwagwalada area office. We have Jabi. We have Kudu. We have Wuse. Wuse Wuje area office. We have Wuse 2. 
we have Garki one, Garki two, we have Vasokoro, we have Maitama, you know, we have uh, 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 Guarimpa, yes, we have Guarimpa area office, we have Gudu, I, I think I've mentioned Gudu. So all in all, we have 16 area offices. So we've deployed system spec staff, Remita, to take care of our customers so that at any point in time, they will not have any problem. Uh, you know, some people will say they cannot get the RRI to make their payment. But once they go into any of these area offices, they can as well make their payment. Or they can come to the headquarters. We have well-established customer care office where we have our staff there. We have our remitter staff. We have the neighbors situated. So in every area, we have made it possible and easy for payments to be made. Monthly, we generate over 200 million to FCT administration. And uh, with the usual uh, directive we have, every money generated goes into the TSA. And uh, that's what we've been doing. And uh, FCT administration has been giving us some percentage, well, not equitably to what we generate, to run the office monthly. So we have been on this matter for some time now. Uh, it's something we have been preaching all the time. We do have customer care forums. We've done that in all our area offices. And we do tell customers, please do not give any staff any FCT water, board staff, money to assist you. Because we have this attitude, I beg, help me. You don't do that. That is why we have put in place all these means of paying water bills, like I enumerated earlier. We even encourage our customers, not even give their house boys, house girls security money to pay that most times these monies are not paid some people come here we say look i made payment and it did not reflect on the on my bill or bill paper after what i did when i came on board was to establish a unit call we call it uh Sorry, I just forgot the name we do call it. Okay, I'll get to that when I, I, I in the course of my explanation. This unit is just created to go through all the bills, which when such complaints come, up, come on board, I will discover that the monies claim that we are paid. We are not paid at all no reflection units you understand because once money is paid all these bills are being automated once it, uh, the money is paid it goes into the system and it is said that it's paid when the money is not paid the system would record zero so when we had when i put on board this unit no reflection unit we discovered that it's not the problem is not from us is from the source. Possibly our staff would have been given money to pay. I know what that means. The person will use the money for one or that one thing or the other. Or maybe house girl, house boy, driver, and the rest of them. I'm happy to say that somebody came here and confessed. He was accusing us, oh, more, all the monies I've been paying, there is no indication that I've been making these payments. I said, okay, let me have the bill. And when we had the bill, we went through the years he claims as we pay, and there was no reflection of that payment in our system. And he confessed that he has been given his driver money to pay his bills. So how does that con consign us? So we do preach to our customers, please pay your money 
from the comfort of your bedroom, from the comfort of your sitting room, your workplace, even in your car, you can stop and make your payments. And it will just go into the system. Because I have the belief that FCT Water Board, considering the beautiful infrastructure that has been put in place by FCT man Management, we should be making over 400 to 500 million every month. Because when you get to Lower Osman there, you can see the state of arts that is being put in place. First class. The general manager admonishes the residents of the Federal Capital Territory on the proper use of water as she further disclosed that the presence of car wash at every location of FCT is illegal as they are major facilitators of the illegal connections and it will soon be stopped. Yes, I will advise them, like I said, a lot of uh, investment has been put in place to treat water. And uh, we do let them know. We've done a lot of flyers and the rest of them on the use of water. Like most homes, instead of using these, uh, uh, what they call it, these uh, pipe to water their plants, you know, the quantity of water being used is much. You can use buckets, fetch water and water the plants. Even though it's not so encouraged to use treated water to water plants, it's better to use raw water to do that. Then vehicles. Some people will use vehicle, use uh, these pipes. Is it rubber pipes you call it? To start putting a lot of water on vehicles. Why not fetch water with your bucket? And hose. hose, yes, exactly, hose. Why not fetch water in the bucket and wash the car? Then we have car wash. You can see in the city, every place has car wash in the city, which is wrong. They're illegal. And we have moved towards stopping that. The committee has has sat and they come up with reports, which I know very soon it will be implemented. You know, these are people that go about dealing with our water. You know, taking our water, taking our water off the distribution network. They go on to do all these illegal connections. You know, and we've been pleading with Nigerians, please discourage this car washing thing that is all over the city. We go around stopping them. We go there, disconnect. You disconnect today. The moment you leave in the night, they will go and reconnect, fill up their reservoir. And when you come, they tell you they, they're not using your water. You know why they are doing that? But with the committee uh, recommendation, which I have endorsed to the management, We'll have a designated basis for car wash. And we encourage the use of raw water to do that so that everybody will be safe. And we, we are also planning. You know, every 22nd of March is our World Water Day. Uh, you are invited, and I hope you'll be with us where we talk about water, you know, the uses what what water means to everybody and how we can conserve water so it's very important you are there then you find out that most residences don't even respect this water we give some people have reservoir and when it gets to a point it will be get it will get filled up and just be pouring out wasting this water this precious, quant this precious thing that we all, you know, we, we do have sleepless nights in water board to make sure that we, we get portable quality water. And we have gone to the residences to say, look, there's a way to do that, to do this. Manage your water. There's this instrument that when, once it's there in the reservoir, when the water gets filled to a certain point, it stops on its own. Why wasting this water? In fact, it has come to a point that I would 
I do tell my area managers. But if you get to a place and this is con it continue happening there, we keep saying this, waste. Short, not just, some people will say there was an issue we had. The person said, yeah, it's not your meter, we pay for the water. I say that is not good reasoning because there are some people that don't have that water at all. It's not that you pay. How much are you paying after all? For 80 naira, for one cubic meter of water that is five drums, that is out of irresponsibility. I do check my area managers. After you have consulted the residents and they keep doing that, shut them off. We don't want your money. You can get your water somewhere because it's waste and it's act of irresponsibility. So we do emphasize to them, please, this water is precious. This water, if we are to pay for the water we consume, it's not affordable at all. But it's one of the federal, I mean, the FCT administration way, if you call it palliative, to make sure that everybody gets it. We can, without water, we cannot live. Nobody can live. We are all made of water. So you should conserve, you should respect it, you should honor it and cherish it. So that is the whole thing. So we advise residency of Abuja. The little money we have now engaged you to pay, kindly pay us when you get your bills. Some people don't pay, even as little as it is. The gentleman that just came in before you came out, you came on board, has applied to assist us to go to all those that have not paid. There are some people owing more than two, two million naira for something they have used, something that has given them life. I will have some organizations I would not like to mention them, but they all know. We are still pushing them to pay for the services we have rendered. If there is anything anybody should pay for, it's water. Water being given. It is not easy. That is why you find out in some states in this country, water is uh, golden. Why is it golden? Because of the process being put in place to get portable water. So for FCT, we are doing our best and we are pleading, please pay up your bills. Our water is the best and it's cheap.